What's up, T-Freaks? It's Danny. And this is James from TDB, uh, bringing you episode supposedly 234. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we are drinking some ripe tea here uh, from white tea. This is called brown sugar, and this tea is known for having some explicit language on its wrapper. It oh, says, wow. shit damn motherfucker on the... Uh, and big font on the wrapper, so give it to White Tea for creativity. Creativity? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sorry. Making the bad tea puns already. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, brown sugar. How old is this? So, it's stiff. Tw- it was pressed in 2015. It may have older material. It's supposed to be mainly like Huang Pian, so larger leaf, uh, big broad leaf stuff. Smells like right for me. Yep. Not necessarily getting the brown sugar vibes yet. Yeah, I don't know if it's supposed to taste like brown sugar, but I guess we'll see. It wouldn't be outrageous for a ripe, I suppose, to have a little bit of those notes. Mm -hmm. Brewing a really nice, vivid red right there. Yep. So, not too dark, and I think it's supposedly a lighter fermented one, so it probably is not going to ever brew pitch black. It smells like a ripe. Mm-hmm. It smells great. High pour. Pretty fancy. Yeah, because we just need to drink a lot of this. Boop. Cheers. Let's do it. Cheers. It's like surprisingly uh, viscous and kind of thick, not quite oily, but kind of captivated by the texture already immediately. Um, I'd say it's still opening up for me. Uh, Yeah, I'm tasting a little bit of it, but I can't say I'm picking up too much uh, mm-hmm. just distinctive notes mm-hmm. yet. I think it's on the creamier side of uh, ripes as opposed to the more um, fruity. Yeah, it's got a bigger, rounder profile, I'd say, than yeah. uh, than like an intensely rich one. Right, up nice and dark. Did you wait the, le- the leaf on this? Because this looks like mucho. What mucho is a lot in Spanish. Oh. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> It, it, it very well might be, so we can pull some out if we think we, we're overdoing it. We need to. We need the material. You do have a little bit of variance there in some of the fermentation. Right. It's so like, it looks like some is sort of like brownish and some of it's a little bit darker. Yep. I'm just getting tea everywhere. Whatever. Mm. Yep. Mm. Onward. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Hmm. Now I get a little more sugary type vibes to it, mm-hmm. sort of like minerals, a little bit of grittiness to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not, um, hmm. this isn't like, it definitely has that sort of like stick flavor and a little bit of that sort of like hint of the cherry uh, fruit, not a lot. Um, I would put this more in the sort of earthy or deeper bodied uh, ripe, um, a bit more texture there. Uh, what do you think in terms of the actual viscosity and the I think it's pretty good, strength? actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say it's more viscous than it is uh, rich. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not like some of those really small leaf ripes can get really creamy uh, and really <clears throat> fast and they brew really quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, this seems to be the opposite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, too, because at least for me, I know that I will... The sensation of the sort of viscosity being thick itself conveys so much sort of sensory information it's almost like wow this is really intense and it is intense um but the flavor itself might not be super heightened it's just a lot going on regardless of the flavor yeah wow so still brewing up like a really deep 
or um, red, uh, I guess dark brown at this point, kind of yeah. maple. So we're probably brewing this, I guess, on the harder end, but mm-hmm. it, it seems to be holding on pretty well to it. Yeah, I'd like maybe like a, just a lingering tad of a uh, touch of bitterness, but those sort of um, mm, a little bit more uh, frictiony charcoal leaf kind of flavors. Kind of mid mid tongue um, that are lingering that tastes that are nice and interesting. Let's keep going. Cheers, guys. Gosh, this is just so it's so viscous in the cup. Yeah, I'd say that's probably the thing I like. Uh, I, I do you think it's oily now? Like you yeah. said earlier, it was viscous, but maybe not quite oily. Yeah, but yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I I would agree. I I think that's the part I'm enjoying the most about this tea yeah. is sort of like the thick, smooth, broad profile right. of it. more of those sort of like hmm. I don't want to say this in a weird way but kind of like hay or dry grass or um, not quite vegetal but uh, you know that sort of earthy profile yeah kind of suits our autumn day that we are having here in Seattle mm-hmm. indeed the taste of fallen leaves <laughs> <laughs> and actually it's coming into more of that sort of like aged smell in my mind more basementy in the cup. More earthy, woody. Um, mm, yeah, this isn't for me a particularly warming tea necessarily. Um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as ripe goes, that would mean that it's on the cooling end of things. Exactly. Since a lot of ripe is really quite warming. Okay. Boom. Gosh, this is gonna continue to brew out super thick. Holy smokes. And, uh, yeah, so it seems <laughs> like bad. this tea, tea is sort of uh, on the... Just look at the... Yeah. Like the liqueur coming out of the cup itself is just, like, thick. Is that something that you enjoy in a ripe? I think it can be too much. I mean, usually that's a sign of, like, wow, I added three times as much leaf as I should have. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but this doesn't have this the accompanying taste profile with that um yeah. i think you just uh tea leaved your glasses oh. whoa <laughs> getting some uh, nice instagram filters going on right now <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, so look at how dark it is too yeah it's interesting because you know goodness in the cup it's nice and viscous and thick it's brewing up with those sort of deeper flavors it's not as sweet and yet yeah. it's not too much it's not you know you kind of expect it to be kind of jumping over that cliff but no. yeah it's thick, but it's not like overly, overly done at all in, in any way. It's very a very comfortable sort of thickness mm-hmm, to it. Mm-hmm. Like if you have a raw pour and it's really thick, you might also be incredibly bitter or something like that. And this, you don't have that issue. We're getting closer to that sort of astringent mouth pucker, at least mm. in this steeping for me. But hmm. the viscosity is so there and this, the texture and um, flavor profile is really nice. If the flavor profile is a little harder to pin down, um, I think, than sort of the loudness of the of the texture. Yeah. Yeah, this steep in particular almost reminded me a bit of uh, liquor in a little bit of ways, just sort of like that is yeah. slight dry astringency to it. Mm-hmm. Mm. How would you place this in terms of the reps that um, you've had? I think it's fairly different, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that speaks more to the reps that I have had, which maybe are smaller leaf. I'm mm-hmm. not totally sure, but this seems to be different. Uh, it, I'd, I'd almost put into a different category than, for instance, the Shaguan tool that we're always rep- uh, talking about. Yeah. So, I don't know. What about you? Yeah, this is... Uh... This is a unique ripe. I mean, drinking this blind, it's not like you're not thinking it's a ripe. Yeah, it it's, like it's a ripe. clearly a ripe, yes. Yeah. So, but um but it's kind of a surprisingly powerful brew given how um I don't want to call it like light because it's definitely getting stronger and more intense now and uh we're using a lot of leaf and it continues to be flash brewed out really deep. Um, you know, I mean, still really, yeah, brown. And have you even reboiled? I haven't even. No. No. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I mean, like, as Denny said, you can just sort of tell by the way the liquid's moving around that it's a, a thick, kind of syrupy brew to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm. Flavor notes here, I wouldn't call it as sweet as other ripes. Again, it's not as fruity. Probably, yeah, more of that sort of minerally, um, not quite vegetal, but sort of like earthy and maybe a little bit leathery, a little bit of that sort of cream, which is kind of also a textural thing in the mouth. And, yeah. Um, as it comes together really well. It comes kind of, kind of beautifully. It's almost like kind of velvety. Um, so it's really nice. But this is kind of one of the more fringy ripes. That yeah. I've had, which is great. For sure. One of those teas that might not be the first thing you drink in the morning or that you drink every day because it's a little bit more unique. Um, but a fun change of pace. Yeah, exactly. Really yummy. Mm, still really tasty. That's crazy. And it's still really thick. I think we'll call it here. Um, yeah. But this is a kind of, this is a tea that, yeah, we could brew out a ton of. And actually, you know, it didn't stand that much in the in the... In the cup, yeah, you can see the big leaves in there, definitely. Yeah, and sort of a mix of colors, mix of fermentations. Uh, yeah, some of them are quite light, actually, for yeah. a ripe. Yeah, yeah and, and the good thing about ripe tea is it almost always is a very affordable price, attractive. So I think this is something $24, $25 for a 200-gram brick. So yeah. a very reasonable price. You can check it out at whitetea.com. I think it's worth sampling. I definitely, yeah, least. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, check this out. If you folks out there like ripes, um, but want to sort of expand your palate within that category, this would probably be a great, yeah. and, um, affordable uh, purchase or sample. Yeah, for sure. If folks want to learn more about tea in general, James, what should they do? Yeah, they should come check us out at tdb.org. They should hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, let us know what you guys want to see more. Do you guys want to see more ripe pour? Do you want to see more oolongs? Do you want to see more from white tea? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Um, and thank you uh, to White Tea for making this tea. Uh, I think Denny and I both enjoyed it. Indeed. And we will uh, see you guys next time. Cheers.